All right, on this one, we've got a block sliding down a ramp, and we're asked about all these work and energy concepts in this, in this context. So I have a mass on this thing of 1.5, and that's not in the diagram, so just maybe I'll put it in over here just to remind me. Uh, I have a tilt angle. That's there. Coefficient of kinetic friction. That's there, so everything's there for me. I want the work done by gravity work done by friction, work done by the normal force, and the final speed. So there's a lot going on here. I'm going to put in the force of gravity real quick. So there's mg. And I'm going to go ahead and just get a magnitude on that in the diagram just to keep things as compact as I can. And that's 14.7 newtons. And then I'm going to do the usual decomposition into parallel and perpendicular components. Hopefully with some efficiency. So I've got my parallel perpendicular axes there. And as usual, this angle between the force of gravity and the perpendicular axis is the same as the angle of incline. And then I'm going to decompose the force of gravity into its parallel perpendicular components. So there's the perpendicular piece and then the parallel piece. And this perpendicular piece is given by mg cosine theta. I'll plug things into that in a minute. And then I have mg sine theta. I'll plug numbers into that in a minute. I just wanted to wrap up just kind of the setup here. Then my friction force is going to oppose the direction of the sliding. So there's FK given by mu K times the normal force. And my normal force is just enforcing the fact that this block has to, t has to stay constrained to the surface of the ramp. And that means the normal force must be equal to mg cosine theta to stop any perpendicular acceleration from occurring. All right, so this is our standard diagram. Uh, the first thing I want is the work done by gravity. So I'm going to go ahead and, and the way I'm going to talk about it is that work, here I'll switch to yellow. We can write it as a dot product. All right, there's no variation in the forces here, so we don't have to worry about using calculus for anything. It's just um, a dot product of the two forces. But another interpretation of this is that it's just the parallel component of the force of gravity in this case times the magnitude of my displacement. So to make this clear, um, I'm going to go ahead and just, just a mini lecture real quick. I have a force vector pointing this way maybe and a displacement vector pointing this way and an angle between them theta and I'm trying to get the work and the work is the dot product force times delta x and we know that's the product of their magnitude times the cosine of the angle between them but all I'm doing is shifting here a little bit and saying let's put the cosine next to that force vector but what is f cosine theta that's just a component of the force vector in the direction of the displacement vector. All right, so I will frequently do this whenever it's handy. I'll just look at the parallel component of the force and then use the entire displacement. Instead of trying to figure out the angle between the force and the displacement and getting the cosine of it. Now, if you wanted to do that here, you could use the entire gravitational force and then find this angle between the gravitational force and the displacement vector, that's 50 degrees, and find the cosine of it. And that's the same as the sine of 40, which is what I see up here. All right, hopefully that, that's cleared up more confusion than it's caused. Let's get back on task. I have um, mg was 14.7 sine 40. Again, I'm just trying to get the parallel component of the force. It's the geometric interpretation of the, the dot product. And I get 9. 0.45 newtons for that. So I'm just taking F parallel, the parallel component, multiplied by the entire displacement. So it's 9.45 newtons times a displacement of 3 meters. 
I get 28.3 out of that. 28.3 joules. Next, compute the work done by friction. So I've got to get the size of that friction force. That's mu k times the normal force. That's 0.5 times the normal force, which is mg. That's 14.7 times the cosine of 40 degrees. I'll go ahead and put it over here. And I've got 5.63 newtons for that force. And the friction force is exactly opposite to the direction of the displacement as this thing slides down. So two vectors pointing in opposite directions have an angle between them of 180, and the cosine of that is negative 1. So my work is going to be, if I write it as, as a dot product first, It's going to be negative because they point in opposite directions. And then I have the magnitude of the friction force, magnitude of the displacement. All right, so as you might expect, friction is sucking energy out of the system. So I get negative 16.9 joules if I round to three sig figs. OK, next. Compute the work done by the normal force. And this is part of a larger theme that forces of constraint cannot do any work. Normal force is a type of force of constraint. It's just enforcing the fact that this block is constrained to the shape of this surface. And constraint forces always point perpendicular to the displacement. So in this case, the normal force is perpendicular to the displacement over the entire course of, of the motion. If the surface was curved, the normal force still would be perpendicular at every moment to every increment of displacement, and this, the same conclusion would follow. What's the work done by the normal force? You would take a dot product, normal force and displacement. And that's the product of their magnitudes, cosine of the angle between those two vectors, but the angle is 90 degrees and the cosine of that is zero. So the normal force can't do any work in this case. Compute the final speed of the block. So I'm going to look at the work energy theorem and go net force, I mean network, is a change in kinetic energy. And again, we started at rest. I think I forgot to say at rest, but when I forget it, you can assume that's what I meant. My initial kinetic energy is zero. And my net work in this case involves two different forces. My mass was one and a half kilograms. And there's not a lot of room down here, so I'm just going to do it all on my calculator. So 28.3 minus 16.9. Then I multiply that by two to get rid of the one half. Then I divide it by one and a half. And then I have to square root the result. And I get 3.90 meters per second. So something you might want to do on your own time is repeat this problem by using Newton's second law and kinematics. And you're going to end up with exactly the same number for the final velocity. So right now what we're doing is just we're developing an alternative machinery for doing mechanics, this idea of energy. It just gives us like a different toolkit that is oftentimes more powerful than Newton's second law combined with kinematics.